The flagship of the Krum Hegemony, Armada, orbited Earth amid the wreckage of what was left of the meager UN Space Defense Force. Aboard was a small delegation from the United Nations of Humanity, summoned to accept the terms of humanity's surrender to the hegemony. The war had been swift as would have been expected. Humanity was a young upstart, only recently having become known to the galaxy at large. Their fate had been a foregone conclusion. The only question had been which nearby power would conquer them and turn them into a vassal state. Sure, there was the Galactic League, which was founded to foster peace between races and bring justice for those too weak to defend themselves. But everybody present, including the League observers, knew that the only actual peace was that which was enforced by particle cannons and fusion warheads. Things that the League was sorely lacking. Besides making self-aggrandizing speeches about cooperation and unity, the observers' only real purpose here was to rubber stamp the standard demands of surrender that the Crumb Hegemony would present and which United Nations of Humanity would accept. And with their speeches now held, it was time for the demands. The Supreme Commander Verzil, of the First Fleet of Crumb, stood up from his chair in the middle of the long side of the conference table. To his left and right sat his admirals and senior captains. At one end of the table sat the two League observers. Opposite to Supreme Commander Verzil sat Andrew Morrison, the head ambassador of the UNH, and his delegation. The Supreme Commander spoke. As the voice and authority of the Crumb Hegemony, I, the Supreme Commander of the First Fleet of Crumb, demand that United Nations of Humanity immediately cease all hostilities against the Crumb Hegemony, submit unconditionally, and be forever bound to the authority of the Crumb Hegemony. Does the United Nations of Humanity accept the just mercy of the Crumb Hegemony in these terms of surrender? Ambassador Morrison glanced to his right at General Terence Hall, who nodded curtly. Then he glanced to his left at General Yang Chao, who also nodded. Ambassador Morrison stood up to meet Supreme Commander Versal head to head. He squared his shoulders and cleared his throat for effect. The United Nations of Humanity do not accept these terms, or any terms of surrender. There was a silence as quiet as that of the deepest space as Morrison and Versal stared each other down. You are a young race. Perhaps you do not understand your situation. The Supreme Commander gestured at the large windows with his hand. Outside was Earth, and the glimmer from thousands of pieces of wreckage catching the rays of the sun as they spun. Your fleets have been destroyed. They are nothing but twisted pieces of metal. You have nothing that can hope to resist our ships. With nothing more than a mere touch of a button, I could rain fire on your cities and turn the surface of your planet to glass. Yes, you could. Morrison nodded in agreement. He paused for a second, then looked Verzo in the eye. Will you? It wasn't a question. It was a challenge. What? The Supreme Commander was caught off guard. It was a simple question and one I would hope someone of your stature would be able to answer. Will you? Morrison enunciated those two words individually with emphasis. One half of Verzil's mind was caught up in the absolute outrage that was bubbling up with this almost casual insult towards him. The other half was caught up in the absolute insolence of these monkeys, even daring to question that his answer would be anything other than emphatic yes, and that he was ready to prove it. Both of these trains of thought collided and logged out his mouth, and he was simply left agape. Ambassador Morrison took advantage of this. Allow me to answer for you. This isn't about raw materials. You would just go mine an empty star system without risking trillions of credits in military hardware. This isn't about extermination. If it was, you wouldn't have even given us the choice in the first place. This isn't about glory, for there is none to be had in the wanton slaughter of civilians. And I believe even the League, as spineless and toothless as it is, would have a thing or two to say about outright genocide. Morrison glanced at the League observers, who were looking extremely uncomfortable in their chairs. No. This is about Earth, our people, our built-up economy and industry. If you nuke us from orbit, you destroy the only thing you stand to gain from this. So I ask again, Morrison glared at Verzal, will you? Will you cross the only real red line the League has? Will you destroy the very thing you wish to gain? Supreme Commander Verzal had no answer. A bluff he hadn't even realised he'd been making had been called, and he had nothing to fall back on. Morrison continued. 
We may be a young species, but we did our best to learn as much about all of you as we could. We've seen this pattern repeat over and over in your histories. You invent aircraft, spaceships, starships. Each new higher ground gives you an easy victory, because once you dominate the sky above your enemies, a rational opponent surrenders when you can destroy them with impunity. But what if your opponent isn't rational? What if you cannot simply destroy them because in doing so, you make your own victory moot? You can destroy from the sky, but to control, you need boots on the ground. We may be young, but we know this. None of you have fought a land war in millennia. We have. We know what hell awaits you if you try to hold Earth by force. Every man and woman, in every city, in every village, in every house on the planet will make you pay in blood for every square meter of dirt. Ambassador Morrison pulled a data pad from the pocket of his suit. This contains our terms for the peace treaty between the United Nations of Humanity and the Crumb Hegemony. It restores our borders back to the pre-war state. The Crumb Hegemony pays restitution for damages to the civilian infrastructure, and we forget about this unfortunate incident. The rest of the human delegation stood up and turned to leave as Morrison threw it onto the table in front of the Supreme Commander. Or, you're welcome to try out the alternative, because we hold the ultimate low ground. <laughs>